What's going on, guys? Rich Schneider right here, Night Report. We're back. Craig, Chris, the crew's back. The Night Report crew's uh, back. Guys, we need a theme song. I know. Like, this is, I'm getting tired of this. I'm, I'm tired of introducing us. I want well, I someone said, to introduce I to- us. I told you, if we should, like, send out a message to the message boards, if anybody wants to make us, like, a theme song, go, like, they can just send it to us and they can win, like, you know, free premium or Pretty something. Good. Hear me out. Are you screw pod, man? Pretty good singers. Yeah. You know what? That was the they first thing that came to mind. I just thought about it. Like, they had the, the <laughs> what, what was it? Return of the Rack. Return of the Rack. Uh, uh, they, had, they had a bunch. What was the Chris Ash one? Chris, uh, uh, Chris Ash, punt, uh, a punt guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I actually, I might have to hit him up and be like, hey, guys, uh, this sounds kind of weird, but we need a theme song. We need an introduction <laughs> theme song. We need something to introduce us and just yeah. pretty unique, but. All right. Uh, I guess uh, everyone's kind of still hung over from that uh, that loss on Sunday. That was ugly. Let's just get right into it. Um, yeah. It was ugly. It was really bad. It was not good at all. I have so many critiques that I'm going to throw out here over the next, like, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, whatever we do this for. Uh, I'll let you guys go first before I start yelling. Yeah, I first mean, hit. they had, I mean, you know, they had, I think I think there was like eight, eight, eight minutes left and they were up by nine, ten. Uh, they just couldn't get a rebound to save ten. a life. They missed. It, it was 10. 10 points. It was 10, 10 points. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and they couldn't get a rebound. They missed shots. I don't think they went to the free throw line in the second half. I mean, they went in the run. Then Houston came back. Uh, I know the, uh, the one guy uh, ha- had the hip pointer. He could barely walk, and he was, like, toughening up. He, he was getting rebounds. He was yeah, Dijon Giroux. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dijon Giroux, yep. And, uh, yeah, man, it, the, and they had it, and then they went. <clears throat> they did the, uh, you know, they slowed down the offense with like four minutes left. I thought that was, I mean, I didn't have a problem with that. That's what they do, but they, they just didn't execute. And then they, obviously Houston did and, you know, and they won. So yeah, it was, it was, it was a rough way to end the season. It, it, but yeah, the, the minute, like me and my buddies were watching the game in my, at my house and we, the minute Drew came or Drew or Jarrell, however you say, mm-hmm. came back in, I was like, Oh, there's your storyline for the game. He's going to come back in and they're going to win. That's it. Yeah. And so be it. It happened. Then you see him afterwards, like, Ma, my hip, I did it. I told you, I'm a savage. It's like, oh my God, they're going to play this off, aren't they? He, was a hell, he is a hell of a player, man. Mm-hmm. I give him credit. I give him a lot of credit. Yeah, yeah. He, um, that dude was, that dude was just dying out there and he still played through that hip injury. Yeah. You could see every, t- every time the guy moved, I mean, he's basically grabbing at his hip. I mean, you have to give that guy props. He really played through what looked like a really bad injury. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's all adrenaline at that point, I think. And we'll, we'll see if he's able to go next week against uh, Syracuse, I guess. That's that's the worst part is that Syracuse beat West Virginia. Rutgers had a shot at if they won this game, they probably – I'd like to think they would have beat Syracuse, and then they would have played who? Loyola? Mm-hmm. It would have been a cool matchup. Or mm-hmm. whoever uh, – who else is in that bracket? I don't even know who's left. Um, t- uh, Oregon State and – Oh, yeah. Oh, Oregon yeah, State yeah. and Loyola. So, I mean – Yeah, yeah. Geez, they, it would have it would have been cool to watch uh, Miles Johnson go up against a uh, Kurtwig. Yeah, the legend. <laughs> the legend with the beer belly and the mustache and all. <laughs> ah, that Loyola team's fun to watch, though. I'm kind of yeah. rooting for him in that bracket yeah. now. I am too. If only if only somebody called that upset over Illinois. Wow, yeah. you know what, Craig? You know what? I hate you. <laughs> you Busting my bracket. I mean... looked good early on, and then I don't know what the hell happened, but <laughs> Loyola just. They're a tournament team. I don't get it. I think like 99 out of 100 times, Illinois wins that game. And then there's just, it's there's that one time in March and it just boom. I don't know. Loyola's a good team, man. They have a lot of players that came back from, you know, last year and even that Final 14. They have a couple and they're just people. Yeah. I told you, people sl- slept on them and they're, they're a good team, man. Yeah. yeah. I think they're they play under- a style that's just hard to combat. Yeah. It's true. But uh, going back to what Chris said, the last, what, three, four minutes of the game, mm-hmm. they were just kind of like, playing iso ball a little bit i know they do this quite a bit and that's usually when it's like oh geo he's clutch blah blah, blah. I, I get it i get that point but i, I don't like it at all I, I get that they do it and they do it often but it's not good like if you're missing those shots obviously you're gonna lose the game you lost a 10 point lead with i think seven eight minutes left whatever mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. and it's just I, I don't know i just don't like the the play calling i think that's kind of on the coaching at that point a little bit let them play their game um, as far as the last shot goes, was I don't know if I would have gave it to Ron either. I probably yeah, would have gave it to I, either I, Jacob I or uh Yeah, I don't I don't know if the plan was really to give it to Ron. I saw Gio was kind of dribbling up and then he kind of saw I think he got spooked by a little bit. It looked like they were trying to double him possibly because they knew he's the guy that's gonna probably take the last shot. 
and he just saw Ron right near him, so he just decided just to give it to Ron. I think it was just a heat of the moment type thing. Yeah, and well, I, really... think it was, I think it was a play because Piker really? said they run that play. <laughs> I, he yeah. said they run that play a lot in practice. Okay. It actually remind me of the uh, the game winner from Villanova a couple years ago in the championship. So I think they're they were trying to do do something like that. Um, I mean, I mean, Ron, you know, I I, I agree. I don't think Ron maybe was the, the best choice. I know he he could obviously make it. But I think maybe got to give it to like Jacob Young there or something like that. So, yeah, yeah, that was that was bad. Is that throughout that whole stretch where they basically where they lost the game, it felt <laughs> like Jacob just they didn't factor him into the offense at all, and he was the guy that basically ran the engine that got him there. But I felt like the offense that, during that stretch became too geocentric, which I get. I get why they give him the ball because he's the captain, he's the cl- Mister Clutch, yeah. he's made so many big shots for him over the years. But honestly, this year, I mean, just look at the minutes, look at the last game against Minnesota. It's, it's really been Jacob has been the one that has really driven the engine here. And I felt like they should have given him the ball more and factored him more into the offense during that home stretch. Yeah, it was just a poor sequence of events. The Miles Johnson missed alley oop that yeah. kind of threw it for everyone into like a legit loop. And then um, after that, Geo fouls the guy, gives him an and one. And then it's all momentum. It's a huge momentum swing after that. And it's just like. I don't know. They lost it in the end, but it's yeah. it's definitely interesting. Um, some of the reactions like afterwards, like Paul Mulcahy, like I, I've been told he obviously cares about this team quite a bit. And that, this loss hurt him a ton. And you've seen it on Twitter. You've seen him change his profile picture to a picture of him on the USA Today or whatever crying. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's like it definitely hurt like these guys emotionally, but they'll bounce back. I think they'll be fine. I think people got to stop like underrating next year's team. Yeah, underrated. Yeah, I can't even think. Underrating next year's team. Uh, We're underestimating. Under yeah, underestimating. That's, That's a good word. word. I'm struggling here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's early. <laughs> but before before we get to like next year's team and all that, we know Jacob's out. We don't know about Geo and Miles, or I guess even Mama do at this point. It's gonna be. I like to think Miles is gone because I've been told he has a ton of grad school options, and the fact that they're showing interest in the big man already and John Harrar from Pennsylvania mm-hmm. or Penn State kind of leans towards the fact that they're gonna lose him maybe it's just me i don't know if you guys think differently but no i i I agree i I mean miles has his options um he was like super vague on on uh, um but when he talked to us before senior day about it yeah um he said you know rucker's still an option that that's what he said um i mean there's definitely he definitely kind of knew i'm sure what he wanted to say you know before he was asked so yeah. Uh, and then maybe Geo. I mean, Geo. I, I don't know. Geo. I I probably thought he was gonna you know leave, but maybe you know. But the way he said it the other day, he says he he wants to be a winner, and he doesn't know you know where that's at, you know where that stands right now. Maybe I mean, I, th- I think maybe he does you know want to take one last crack at it, but then there's also everything with the NCAA, and he wants to deal with that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. So, I mean, I don't know. It's su- it's super intriguing. Uh, Jacob. Jacob's obviously. Like less than an hour after the game, I know we had talked about. It. He was like, "Nah, I see ya." Um, and then, and then, Mom, Mama do. Um, I'm not sure. I think, I think he'll probably look look elsewhere. But you never know. Maybe he likes it here and he's comfortable. I kind of think Geo still leaves. If you saw, like, he posted something on Instagram yesterday or today. Mm-hmm. I forget what it was, but mm-hmm. it was kind of like just like it seemed like a farewell post. He never said bye, like like Jacob did, like peace out or whatever. But uh, it kind of seemed like it was like a last, like, that's it. That's my last hurrah at Rutgers. Like, so even if he does leave, I still think they're, they're going to be fine next year. They have so many weapons. They have the, – the guard lineup is going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how Jaden Jones performs. I really think he has starter potential. And they have a lack of scoring kind of from the guards now, especially if yeah. you're going to start, say, like, Mulcahy and Mathis or Mulcahy McConnell, whatever you want to mm-hmm. do. You can do whatever rotation you want, but – the fact that they don't have scoring from the guard position is kind of scary, but that's where a guy like Jaden Jones is going to come in and average, I don't know, maybe 10 plus in his first year, second year, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird, very weird situation they're having right now, just because scholarship wise, you don't really know what you can do and what you can afford to do right now. There's one ship still open. Uh, I know end of uh, the season meetings or whatever you want to call them. Uh, they're happening next week, and then we'll probably have a couple answers on what they have scholarship wise going into uh, the transfer portal, which is nuts right now. Yeah, it's absolutely there's, insane. There's I like think. seven, almost like 700 kids. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 nuts like every year now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, like it, it it's absolutely insane just because everyone's getting a free year now too. So now it's like free transfer. 
per year of eligibility. What the hell is going on? So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't think they need a guard. I like Jalen Miller a lot. I think he kind of reminds me of Gio a little bit in his play style. And he's that big bulky guard combo combo guard kind of mm-hmm. type of player, but it's hard to expect a lot from a freshman. And I know everyone's going to be down on the freshman, especially after what happened this year with Palmquist, Mag, and Reber. But we kind of said from the get-go, well, I, I said, I kind of said it, Reber was not going to be a player from the start. I think he's going to take some time. And he'll, I think his max development's probably like a John Harrar type. I really, he reminds me of him a little bit, but it's going to take him like two to three, yeah, probably three years to get there. Um, Jaden Jones has insane potential. I, I kind of already talked about him. Mawat Mag, 3 and D potential. He showed some flashes in the couple minutes he's played, like, towards the end of the season. Mm-hmm. And even in the beginning of the season, before he, uh, before he got hurt, like, he looked, he looked good. He looked solid. Yeah. Palmquist is the one that intrigues me the most is because he's so athletic. He could shoot the three, but he just looks so nervous out there. And I think that will, with experience and playing and stuff like that, it'll come to his own and start to be more comfortable with the team. The only scary part is that he's been with the team since January. I know it's a weird off season. They barely practice or whatever, but the fact that he was with the team since January of last year last and year. still hasn't really progressed. It's like, mm-hmm. uh, so. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I would a, say international say, kid too. So I'm not sure if that's. Yeah. Obviously. So. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I was, yeah, it's okay. I was just going to say that really like I can understand people's, you know, uh, nervousness, I guess, towards next season. Cause they have a lot of underclassmen. And I mean, I'm not, I mean, Personally, I'm not expecting them maybe to be as good of a team, but at the same time, I'm still mm-hmm. expecting them to be a quality team. And I think they can compete, you know, get back to the tournament. I think that's still a possibility. And it really just comes down to you trusting Pykele and the staff, because I mean, look at, I mean, look at this team. How many of these guys came in as like top recruits? I mean, I mean, they talk about it all the time, but Geo Baker, I mean, who, I mean, Caleb McConnell really grew into his own under this, under this regime. Uh, Miles Johnson. I mean, look at, look at the job this staff has done with these players and now they're bringing in recruits. Like you said, like Jaden Jones, Jalen Miller, they got cliff is going to have another year. I mean, it really just comes down to you trusting this staff that they can uh, improve and progress with these guys and turn this into an even better team somewhere, uh, uh, somewhere down the road. Yeah, that's a good point. The staff has done a really good job at, you know, developing the guys. So, I mean, I know, I know we had talked about, you know, Jalen Miller, Richie, but, I mean, I don't know if you can rely on having a freshman point guard, you know, run the show. Maybe you'll see I – th- I think you'll see – I think you'll see Paul, you know, at, at yeah. point guard a lot. Uh, but maybe – I think they go the drag, uh, you know, uh, the uh, transfer route and get 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 a point guard like uh, like a Jacob Young, you know, possibly. So, <clears> we'll yeah, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not expecting Jalen Miller to run the show. I just think mm-hmm. he'll be a rotational player. I think he's in the rotation from day one. I think he's good enough. I think he's he's literally. I, I'm telling you, I really like his game, and I think he's Geo. Mm-hmm. Like I really think his game reminds. Is it me crazy of to think he could run the show by his sophomore year? No, I think that's very possible. Look at look, look at Geo, for example. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying, yeah. Good, uh, yeah Gio perfect Gio. example. And uh, yeah, no, I think he'll be the backup. I think it's going to be a combination of guys because technically, I guess you can consider Paul Mulcahy okay, the point guard, and he's still going to start regardless. Mm-hmm. But I, ball handling wise. He doesn't have the speed that like Jaden Jones has. I know it's it's gonna be a weird lineup next year. It's gonna be really weird just because Jaden Jones is six seven, six six, whatever it is. Um, mm-hmm. Kale McConnell's six six, six seven, okay, he's six seven, Montez Math is six four, six five, maybe. I think uh, Jalen Miller is the small one of the group, but he's still six three. Like they're gonna be mm-hmm. tall and lengthy, and they're gonna play a phenomenal defense. We know Jaden Jones was one of the top defenders at that recent um, what was it called? I forget what the camp's called, the Wooten camp. Mm-hmm. where it has like the top 100 players in the country and he was one of the top defenders if not the top defender at that camp per most uh analysts that watched um so this this team i really think is going to rely a lot more on defense and rebounding next year and i think another year with cliff underneath this strength and conditioning program and the aggressiveness that he showed towards the end of the year he's only going to get better there's a lot of things he has to work on he has to especially his offensive game there there's not much there he has to develop something we saw miles kind of develop that little hook fade whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. um it, it's such a weird shot but it goes in so <laughs> um, it looks it does look super awkward but yeah it does yeah he, he <laughs> cliff needs to develop some type of post game don't get me wrong he's super athletic and again i say this all the time he can run the floor and transition with yeah, the best yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah yeah but he's still like when he's down low there's nothing there like he's not backing people down he's not 
doing any like of the hezzy or anything like right, that. Right. But he'll learn. I'm convinced with that. Defensively, he's just got or overall in rebounding, he's just got to learn to box people out better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He doesn't feel for the body. He kind of stares at the ball as soon as it goes up. But I really think he has a ton of potential, super athletic, and he'll get there. But a whole off season where they actually get to work out all off season long is going to make right. a difference for him. Uh, Palmquist, Reber, uh, Mag, and so on and so on. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a yeah. real interesting year. And then if you can add a, another big man in like a Harar type, and I don't care what anyone says, he's a five. It's the, the new day and age of the MB, or NCAA. There's no positions anymore. And people have to realize that. Like, I hate when people say Ron's not a four. Ron's not quick enough to guard threes. Mm-hmm. So he's a four. And he's a stretch. He's kind of a stretch four because he can shoot too. Mm-hmm. It brings the, it just changes the whole offensive game. Everyone has to be able to shoot now. It's you just, saw it at the end of that Clemson game. Ron was playing five in the closing. I like that. He did, he, did great, he did a great job, man. Kudos to him. Yeah. Man, it's fun. There's no positions anymore. And people have to get over the fact that, like, oh, he's six foot eight. He's a four. Like, no. Like, Jaden <laughs> Jones is six foot seven. He's probably a shooting guard. Mm-hmm. Like, Paul Mulcahy, he's a six foot seven point guard. <laughs> so is Caleb. So does sometimes. Caleb's a. I don't even know what Caleb is. Caleb's like a <laughs> yeah. he's not good enough to shoot, so he's probably not a two, but he could dribble and mm-hmm. as well as a one. He could guard threes, he could guard four. Yeah, like, he's he's a, good, he's a good defender. Yeah. I really liked his defense in that Houston mm-hmm. game. Phenomenal. And I'm oh, if he didn't foul out, I feel like it might have made a difference in the end, but kind of reminds me of the Drew guy a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh he, really he's, defense. But he's, again, his side selection can be shaky at times, like he like yeah, but yeah, but he plays. Like, he's a good player. I, I, I like Caleb. I think he's, he's one of my favorite players. On the team. I, I think he's a really good player. That's why, yeah. like, people keep saying they're like, "Oh, we're gonna start uh, Mokehi, Mathis, McConnell." Where's your offense coming from? Mm-hmm. You're gonna <laughs> trust Harper to score what thirty a game? No, like you. I think McConnell has. To, I think him off the bench is perfect. He fits that role. He did it perfect against Houston. Keep him off the bench. Put Jones in the lineup just for scoring. Um. The issue is, is like, can you trust Montez to score a solid nine to ten a game? Right. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes but there, there was times where we saw Mathis score zero and go like, I, I saw the stat pop up during the Houston game. It was what two of twenty one of his last three pointer attempts, and then he went two of two, and everyone's like, yeah. what the hell? What's yeah. the, yeah, where was very, where was this? Tricky. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a lot of, a lot of times when when Mathis drives he's just looking for straight up contact and not but and then yeah. and he gets he gets wild at times but I mean I yeah. think he's a good player he's a really good defender um he was high, highly rated coming out of high school I think I think I think he'll you know be better next season I guess you know, to pull in yeah, you definitely. know the simplest terms <laughs> Yeah, so, someone's like on the boards uh, the other day. They're like, <clears throat> they're like, hey, uh, Math is Mathis going to transfer? He's been in and out of the doghouse, dude. He has like a starting spot basically locked up. Like, why? Mm-hmm. Why would you transfer? <laughs> yeah, he started a lot over, over the years, anyway. So yeah, there's that, and then like they don't really have a defender type anymore. So now it's more yeah. on like Mathis to be that lead defender for the group now that Jacob's gone. So I don't know. My uh, you guys know my lineup already. I kind of said it. It's Jones, mm-hmm. okay. He no in no order before someone yells. It's Jones, okay. He, um, Matt, uh, Mathis, Harper, Johnson, or Amarui, whoever starts mm-hmm. there, whatever. But, yeah, I was gonna say going back to the Geo <laughs> Miles thing. To be honest, I kind of think it's up in the air right now. Mm-hmm. I think they're kind of feeling it out. I've more Geos probably feeling it out just to see like if he possibly can make some money playing elsewhere. Oh, but can. um, what was that? A hundred percent. Well, how I'm saying like, com- like, he's probably comparing it. Like, is it worth like, I don't know how much he can make it, if it's worth it, or maybe he'll give it another shot. And maybe if he comes out next year, if he can make more money, I don't know. But um, I kind of feel like they're kind of a pair right now. <laughs> yeah. That if one of, and, if, they're, and, they're, and they're roommates too for, yeah. for all the whole time. So I, mean, I kind of feel like if one goes, then gone. the other's going to go. But if it, one yeah. stays, the it's other's going to stay. Yeah. I could mm-hmm. see that happening. Thank um you. they've been yeah like chris said they've been very vague so it's kind of tough to tell right now but that's kind of where i kind of think about uh, uh geo and miles right now yeah can and i i need people to stop this stop the nba talk They're not no offense to any of them but like geo's not making the nba Mm-mm. um jacob's not making the nba uh miles isn't making the nba like just to stop it they're not mm-hmm. they're no offense they're very good college players they're not good enough though Oh, yeah, uh-huh. and there was uh, I was going to bring up. So I know, obviously, Gio has been very outspoken about uh, the NCAA and all mm-hmm. their all their nonsense. But um, so I was just thinking I was like, is if he leaves, like 
it's kind of hard to it seems like he wants to be one of the main guys that pushes yeah. the NCAA to really have this change. But how's he going to do that on the outside if he leaves? If he maybe if he sticks around for another year, he could see, see that change. So that's why I was wondering. I was like, maybe he sticks around for one more year, right. see if he can really push the NCAA to get you know those NAL NIL uh, laws passed right, and just see what happens yeah. there. I was going to kind of get your I mean, reading on that. Yeah, he could do it all. Why, why? Why does he have to be enrolled in college to do it? He could still fight for their rights regardless. Isn't it a little bit harder though to kind of do it? I think it's easier because now he has more time. He's grad. He's going to be a graduate and he's going to be done with school. He can run his own basketball camp now and not mm-hmm. get fined or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's the whole thing with the meeting with uh, Mark Emmerich coming out saying, uh, you know, yeah, well, yeah, we'll, we'll have a meeting, until, but not until after the tournament. Like, after the on, tournament. Man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come AKA on. let's just try to make people forget and just keep it's literally trying to make people forget. And they have, and the players, you know, won't have leverage by the time the tournament's over anymore. So yeah, he, he's a dick. Put it like that. <laughs> it's, it's, there, there's no other way to put it. He's just a dick. Just, just talk to the players. It's not that goddamn hard. We're doing it right now on a Zoom call. Yeah, just, that, that's put, all like, they wanted too. Like that's they just want to address their problems and issues and everything. It's not that hard. Certain out. It's out, clear, yeah. like Geo Livers and someone else. I forget who it is. Oh, Hannon. Oh, Hannon. It was like, Hannon, it's like yeah. the ringleaders of the group. So just go on a oof, go on a four person Zoom call. I held myself there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, how did? How did uh how did I do that? I don't know. No, no, no. How did how did Isaiah Livers get that's what helped you? How did Isaiah Livers get the shirt with the hashtag right on like a day later? Like I mean Geo had one too. Oh, did he? I didn't notice that. He wore it um walking into the arena during and wore it during warm-ups of the Houston game. Oh, okay. I I must have didn't see that. I'm sure they had a mate or tent to him or whatever. Right. Yeah, and, and, and you t-shirt, but you can't send them food or takeout. Like, get the hell out of here. What are yeah. these rules? Yeah. What's hey, listen, maybe what? they can maybe they can have the meeting and where the uh women's where the women's teams got to have their weight room in that little corner over there with their uh, little weights. That's another that's a joke. I talked to I'm actually glad you, I was gonna bring that up. I talked to Stringer, uh C Ram Stringer and Arella Grantes about that. Mm-hmm. And then like a day a day or two later, the NCA made like a nice little yeah. made it all nice with like extra stuff and they put out a tweet. They're like, Oh, the weight room has arrived arrived. <laughs> like they 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 seem like very proud of it. They and like it should have been that way in the first place. You know what I mean? Like it that was pathetic. Been drastically different. Like that was so pathetic. Honestly, you could go to re- it really was. Who's in charge of that? It was so bad. And it's like you know what? Yep, this looks good. If they ask, there's no space. Like, do they not think the whole have smartphones all this? That they could take <laughs> pictures and record what these things yeah. look like? My retro fitness has a better way as a better weight room than that. <laughs> I. Dude, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. And the NCAA yeah, is turning into, it's turning into a legit joke at this point. It was, it was so bad. It's only and a matter like, of time. Get, till they, like, got, they had like less clothes, less. And then on the court, it basically says like everything is women's basketball, women's basketball. Like, yeah. why does it have to be different? Like, <laughs> you get the same, whatever. But the whole thing is just it's stupid. The NCAA is dumb. And eventually teams are going to either revolt or like secede from them or whatever you want to call it. I, I could see them eventually just making their own tournament and just I don't even know how I don't know how they'll do it. That's the problem. But mm-hmm. it's it's getting ridiculous at this point, especially if you're a billion dollar business and you're like, hey, let's let's give the girls like, I don't know, like a bunch of yoga mats. And like what? <laughs> One set of dumbbells. That's it. We're done. Yep. Like yep. what? <laughs> like like um, Rutgers first workout, they basically did like a dance workout. Like this is so bad. Or what an aerobics class? But no, they just made like a video and they were doing like squats when they were dancing or something uh, like that. Maybe it was just like a dance, but like, uh, that's, I don't know. The saddest part, part is I feel like a politician could just come in and get it done like that. Like it would probably be so quick. Don't get me started on politics, Craig. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's a, that's a different, different route, but they're <laughs> just as big as snakes as NCAA. <laughs> but uh, well, anyway. Well, so actually, speaking of, uh, you know, that kind of, well, not snakes, but speaking of politics and stuff like that, <laughs> Richie Scheider, Richie Scheiderite on Fox 5 News. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Oh, yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> Woohoo. My 10 seconds of fame after, uh, what, damn 15 minute phone call or Zoom yeah, call. Yeah. Wanna, uh, dude, they cut out the worst the, part. Uh, they, they cut out take like, us behind the current of that a little bit? Um, yeah, got a DM, said yes, and uh, there I was. <laughs> Wow. Nice. Yeah, it was like we actually talked in depth. We started talking like about hoops and she like that. She asked me, she's like, what do you think about this Rutgers uh, matchup against um, what was it? Clemson, Houston? Or Clemson, Clemson? Yeah. Clemson, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. What about the Clemson and uh, the matchup against them? And I, I went 
apparently too in depth. And she's like, ah, <laughs> we're gonna have to redo that again. You, you're talking too much like basketball details. Like, uh, I didn't say anything that crazy, but <laughs> sure. So he's gonna dribble the ball. No, 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 no. That's too, that's too like, much. Too much. Too much. What's a transition? <laughs> I was just like, an, uh, an okay, sorry. Like, I was just talking about their style of play, but she goes, no, no, talk just like a little bit more layman's terms. Uh, okay, they, they played the basketball. See, they have a spherical <laughs> ball, and they shoot it into a net. But yeah. sometimes they dunk it. That is true. <laughs> and the team so cool, that man. scores was, more points good. wins the it was, contest. Yeah, it, it was cool, though. I'm it was good enough recognition, cool. stuff like that. So Yeah, that was yeah. cool. That was pretty neat. And then I got to post all of my social media and, you know, mm-hmm. if, if you guys want to give me a couple of likes, Richie Rich underscore 10 Instagram, but whatever. Are you, are you sure it's not Richie Scheiderite underscore? <laughs> no, see, I didn't do that because it, no one knows how to spell that. Yeah. yeah. Too That's so weird. Cause it's like, they could have literally just, they sent you the DM. So they know your Twitter page. Right. They could have just so easily gone to your Twitter page and just see your, names, your names on there. They sent me to DM and right before the interview, they go, Hey, can you just say your last name and uh, spell it for me? And I was like, Oh yeah, no problem. Like C H N Y D R T. And they're like, okay, that's perfect. What the hell happened? Wow. <laughs> wow. So whatever. That was stupid, but it is what it is. Back to Rutgers hoops. I need your guys' lineups for next year. I gave mine. I need your guys. Ooh. Okay. Starting lineups. Not that it matters because Pyco doesn't care about starting lineups. Don't True. <laughs> so but, um, are we are we taking into account transfers? That's a tough one. Yeah, you know what? I'll say yes, but we're going to pretend that Geo, Miles, and uh, Jacob are all gone. Okay. We like that. So if they're, if they're all gone, if they're all gone and they – let's for, you know, simplest thing, they don't bring in anybody. So I think you'll see Paul at point guard, and then you'll see Montez, Caleb, Ron, and then Cliff. Okay. Okay. I'm there's, thinking – There's like the veteran, the veteran group right there. You know, mm-hmm. they still have a veteran team. They'll be – Technically, I guess you can call them, call them juniors, whatever. Again, so, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm... Sophomore for for from okay technically, but yeah, is it really? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, because he's uh, so, yeah, so yeah, they get the extra year back. They're on the new, new it's impressive, rules. actually. Great. Yeah, I'm kind of probably thinking of someone on the same. I think Paul's probably your starting point guard. That's I think that's kind of kind of set in stone. I feel like. Um, I would say Cliff is probably if Miles doesn't come back, Cliff yeah. is probably going to be the starting center. I would hope so. Um, yeah, he started, so. he started this year too. <laughs> again. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's I, true. a lot of people forget about that. Yeah. Um, Ron is going to Ron. I mean, Ron's going to start. That's pretty obvious. Um, this, hmm. is, this is the tough. Part. Yeah, this is tough. Do you think I was thinking this? I know you say Jaden Jones is basically a point guard. Do you think there's any chance he could take Montez's role? Maybe not as the point because he's the. He's well, he, of, does, he doesn't have to be the point guard. I just yeah. say that just because he, he can dribble. He can dribble pretty well. He can That's take the ball up. Like, is LeBron a point guard? No, but he yeah. dribbles the ball up. Is um, I don't even know who else is a poor example, but no, yeah. I, that's yeah, all I honest, got. I, I know what you mean, though. Yeah. That's all I got, really. I, if I Jaden, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying if Jaden can be really that sharp shooter that Rutgers just desperately needs, I mean, you saw it towards the end of that game, they need like a Buddy Bayon, somebody mm-hmm. who's just a guaranteed bucket every time they touch the ball because. As much as Geo is Mr. Clutch, really, he just wasn't a guaranteed bucket down the stretch yeah. of that game. You could see he Very was just, true. You just kept trying and trying. And at t- I mean, it just it was tough. So they really need just a sharpshooter who can just shoot it really mm-hmm. from anywhere. I mean, anywhere on the court. So I feel like if 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 Jaden can be that type of guy, this team is gonna be scary. Yeah. So and- I could see possibly him getting the starting job. Hmm. And who am I missing? Um I think that's four. Yeah. Um what position? I don't. I, I can't even think. Another guard. Also, point guard? guard, guard or forward. So you're basically choosing between Mathis or McConnell. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Um, between them, probably. Yeah, I could see Mathis probably for defense. To be honest, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah and then Caleb have Caleb come off the bench. Yeah, I someone. They, that's the other thing. They need a veteran to lead that uh that bench group somehow. They yeah, just you can't trust like. No offense to them. You can't trust the younger kids like Mag or Pomquist just to to lead yeah. that group. But right. I think it's still going to be like a seven, eight man rotation next year. I think they'll add another big. So there's your two centers and Cliff and whoever. Mm-hmm. Ron probably gets backed up by either Mag or Pomquist, depending on whatever matchups or what you know, whatever. So there's there's three backups right there, and you already have the five starters. So it's like 
that's probably it for the most mm-hmm. part. Minus, I do think Jalen Miller is going to be one of the guards. I really, I'm very convinced by his play. Um, I'm, I'm going to check out his. I'm going to check out his film again. This Jalen is what Hill. I'm saying right now. I'm on the Ask the Experts thread, the best thread every week on the Night Report. Don't you forget <laughs> it. Anyway, not the point. Someone said, I said, uh, Harar obviously a pretty good fit. If Miles doesn't come back, blah blah blah. He, the Rutgers is showing interest in him. We already posted about this. We posted that he wants to stay close to home. Yada 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 yada. yada. Um, Body, yada, 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 yada. Meg Stallion, get it? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, Iron Eagle did that. Right, so, right. Yeah, that was he's, he's, on. By the way, I was watching that game last night. Yeah. Iron Eagle's great, but he's he's got to lay off some of stuff. So he's got to lay off some of his anyway. stuff. He was doing – what is it? What does Brown do for you? Yes. And then he followed it up. What was the other one? It was so cringe. I can't – were you watching the game last night? Yeah, dude. We – well, there was a crap out of Portland, but it was, yeah, it was a late game. I don't know. Maybe you weren't staying up, <laughs> but um, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of what the other call is. It was so cringe, but it made me laugh. I, I can't <laughs> right. remember what it was now. But anyway, see, this is my point. This guy on the thread goes, I'm reading that John Harar is only six, eight. If that's true, he can't play center. That's not true at all. Did he not see the Clemson guy? <sighs> We yeah. need to be able to get another big man. A tough six eight kid can get it done at the four for us. Harar is a must if we lose Miles. That makes all right. I'm confused by that one, but I get that. Like Harar's the backup to Cliff. Cliff is the center. I but mean, what is John Harar? Star- the uh, starter for Clemson too. Dante Smith was about about the same height. First six, off, eight. he's six. He's six nine two forty according to his profile. Mm-hmm. So number one, he's got the weight. He's got the height. Like th- th- people don't understand. You don't need to be a seven footer to be a center in college. Yeah, and you don't even need to be a seven footer yeah. to be a center yeah. in the NBA anymore. Right. Look at oh, that's guys. that's probably going to lead us into our next. One. I was going to say that for the Big Ten, it seems like athletic athletic bigs give them problems because you could see even though Miles was like taller than the I forget the Clemson guy's name, that guy was giving him problems. Man, that guy could move. He was like, it really didn't matter that Miles had the height mm-hmm. advantage. This dude was all over the place, and he was just not dominating, but he was real playing really well. Yeah. And that's probably something that's been hurting the big 10. I feel like in this conference is they're, they're so used to playing a certain style of basketball that when they face a team that plays a completely different style of basketball, mm-hmm. they have problems really uh, adapting to it. Yeah. A, a lot of teams in the tournament and say tournament are, were very athletic and yeah. it's like you said, caused a lot of problems. So put it like this. Who like, like 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 Houston was was very athletic like all across the board and they were they were getting rebound for rebound and you see a lot of teams in the Pac-12 were causing fits obviously the Big Ten hasn't had a good showing like you said yeah it's nothing against Miles or guys like no, Miles or no. Luca but they're not they're like big like you know right. cr- incredible hulks they're yeah. not like <laughs> super athletic yeah they're not like super athletic big guys like an Anthony Davis or something like yeah. that so when they face somebody who might be a little bit shorter but they have more athleticism. They have a tough time guarding those type of guys. Mm-hmm. I'm not letting this go. I'm looking at that. who are some of the top big men in the big 10. <laughs> All right. You got hundred, hundred Dickinson. You got, you got All right. That's, don't, don't name the tall ones. Name the, the short ones. <laughs> oh, the shorter ones. I don't know. I mean, I mean, everybody okay. in the big 10 is big. So like you're, I'll do it. The, no, I'll, I, I got recruit. it. I got it. EJ Odell, six foot seven, two forty. Yeah. He's their center. Jarius Hamilton. Six foot eight, two thirty, Maryland. Aaron Henry, six foot, six foot six, two ten. He's not. He's not a center. He's not a center though. Who's their center? I, I don't remember, but I yeah. thought I thought he was. <laughs> I thought he was a guard or a forward. To be honest. Nah, Aaron. Well, uh, technically, who's the other forward they use? I mean, this is an oh, us going against big guys Marble, here. Six eight, two twenty five. Mm-hmm. I mean, in a perfect world, you have a seven-footer who can do everything, but I mean. Yeah, well, yeah, I wish I had Nikola Jokic on my team, too, but it's <laughs> not the point. <laughs> well, he's not even that athletic, either. He's just, a, like, a big, incredible Hulk that can shoot. Don't hate on him. He can dribble. I'm not hating on him. He I'm can just dribble. Saying. He can dribble, too. Well, maybe against you. Have you seen his, his <laughs> tape, dude? This man can dribble, like, with the best of them. Well, Miles can dribble, too. He's just he's just not, like, you know. No, he's not. No, he can't dribble, like. Like Miles uh, can take the ball up the court. I've seen him do it. I, I've seen him do it, and then I he's saw him do the one, like, uh, the one spin move the one time, and it's just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, want to yeah, talk yeah. about cringe? That's cringe. Yo, was Listen, that this like year? To was see that this year? I'm about to go find the. I'm gonna find the play. I'm gonna, so I started. Uh, I started Rutgers like end of season awards thing uh, for best play. That might be one of my options. That, oh, that has to be up there. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Bam out of bio six nine. 
I'm oh, tired. Of it. Hey, I mean DeAndre and crushed uh, I at a bio last night. So yeah, but Adebayo can shoot. <laughs> Julius Randle. Mm. I don't know. It's all these. I mean, get rid of them. <laughs> um no but like it's honest i hate that people say you have to be seven foot to be a center stop basing positions off height there's no positions anymore either there's no point guard shooting guard it's hey that guy can dribble he's taking it up hey that guy could shoot he's just gonna sit there and spot up this guy could play in the paint he's clearly the big man look at ron ron's six foot six or six foot seven whenever he is mm-hmm. he's still in the paint sometimes getting boards and shit like come on <sighs> rant over so should we talk a little bit about how the Big Ten completely crapped itself in this tournament? That's another thing. I, I saw um, one of our hey, resident uh, analysts, Russ Wood, posted on the site. He mm-hmm. said that he thinks that uh, we're so used to um, playing bully ball in the Big Ten. Yeah, yeah. That when they That's played exactly, against, yeah. yeah, when they played against other teams, and it's more like they the ticky tacky fouls that they won't call in Big Ten, they'll call in this. But at the same time, I'm like, mm, and you haven't seen Bo Borowski. <laughs> I was about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I was saying about how yeah. they they recruit for the conference. Like, like Rutgers has a lot more big people to play in the play in the Big Ten. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Too. It, it, like it like you said, the fouls were just just yeah. It was great. It, it I was, feel like <laughs> so, he, no, no, go on, go on, go on. Go on. I was gonna say though, I, we talked about this in the chat. I kind of feel like the tournament selection committee, whatever the bracketologists have, I think they badly seeded a lot of these teams like honestly i feel like loyola chicago being an eight seed and eight nine with a potential match against loyal i felt like that was kind of a that was kind of dangerous from the start as you could tell in my uh article that i wrote about when i picked loyola chicago to beat illinois if in case you didn't see that but get them out of here on, <laughs> chris it's me you next time yeah i'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting you're out craig next time i'm you're out <laughs> well at Go least on. i'm going out in a blaze of glory all right, go go on. You can talk. But honestly, though, I feel like a lot of these. Te- I mean, Oral Roberts. I'm not going to pretend like I've watched a lot of Oral Roberts games this season. Has but, anyone? Yeah, I know. Has Oral Roberts even watched a ton of Oral Roberts games this season? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, watching them play in this tournament the last few games, I feel like they're better than a 15 seed. I mean, they really look good against Ohio State and Florida. They do not like look, look like a 15 seed to me. They look like a team that uh, just better. I mean, I don't know how I don't know how to describe it. I just feel like. A lot of these teams have been badly underseeded. Oregon, mm-hmm. I feel like Oregon being a seventh seed was kind of an underseed. I feel like they're better. I mean, you saw them crush Iowa. Oregon, we said from the beginning, Oregon's a good team. So I just felt like a number of these teams got badly underseeded, and it seems like the Big Ten, more than anybody else, has gotten screwed by that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm watching John Harrar highlights. Just That's to prove okay. a point. <laughs> just to prove a point. He's, he's a center. Plays center for Penn State. Plays, yeah. He's going to play yeah. center if he comes here. He's a center. He played, damn I think he center. played well against Rutgers when they played. I hate the I, stop thinking old school basketball. It's not a thing anymore. There's no positions at all. Brad Stevens said it best well, it when they asked him, "Hey, I, who's I, your I hate that for me personally." But you don't like it? I love it. Nah, I'm a I'm a very old school kind of. The only thing I hate is that everyone tries playing curry ball, and it's like, oh, hey, that's get, what I hate. Go Chuck that's from the exactly, exactly. half court logo. Watch this. If I hit this, I'm gonna look cool. If I don't, yeah. I look like a goddamn idiot. Like, yeah. <laughs> by the way, how many different ways does Brad Stevens have to say he's not taking the Indiana job? I've seen him on three separate <laughs> occasions, like the last two weeks. Say I'm not leaving for Indiana. <laughs> no one wants to go back to college and recruit again. It's a pain mm-hmm. in the neck. It's a 24-7 job. It's it's just it's not worth it. If he's going to any team <clears throat> that plays basketball in Indiana, it's gonna be the Pacers. Yeah, I don't even know who the head coach is at the <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm just saying though. Yeah, but uh whatever. I mean, Indiana's who they they hired someone, didn't they? Uh, uh, Minnesota did no Minnesota hired. I think the oh. Xavier assisting uh, Ben Johnson, yeah, who's yeah, a former the, um, uh, Patino Jr. Uh, uh, yeah, that dude coach. got a job in five minutes. That was crazy. Well, I'm not shocked to be honest. He he's going to be a good recruiter there. I think he'll turn them into a decent program. But the guy they hired, I think, is like used to work under Patino, and it's yes. like yes. That's kind of a weird way to go. Like, yeah. why are you going to go down the same coaching tree? Right. But, right. I thought that was that was odd too. But I'll reserve judgment because I don't really know about the guy or anything. I didn't really yeah. read about him at all. So, yeah, I was I was actually asking Alec about like his kind of read on the whole coaching thing, yeah. and he feels like the 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 guy that Indiana is going to uh, go. I think get is uh, Thad Model. 
Yeah, well, did you see what happened there? No, he f- he failed his physical, yeah. right? Oh, did he? Okay, I yeah. didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, uh, actually, the, they reported it. The uh, Indian yeah. rivals say. Okay. They, uh, yeah. He apparently, like, was agreed in principle and failed his physical. Something, I don't know what it was, if it was, like, his knee or something. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate too much because I don't like to, mm-hmm. whatever. He did say, like, he prefaced it with uh, health consider you know how yeah. first well, i think buddy, that's why he retired yeah. or not retired i think that's why he didn't get back into coaching right away in the first place because of health concerns and then he mm-hmm. did the physical and failed it and everyone's like oh um what the hell happened there mm-hmm. but no i, I think beeline's, always, beeline's always out there too he i think he would have been a really good fit actually i don't know um who else they target i mean like of course they're going to target the big names but there's no way that like a guy like chris beard's going to leave texas tech in my opinion um who else is in that group? The one intriguing one, the Loyola head coach. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, you Ooh, Moser. Moser. Yeah. yeah, Scott Drew's not coming. So get, I, why the hell would you leave Baylor for Indiana? I get it. Like, hey, Indiana is like a blue blood. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Used to be. There's no such thing as blue bloods no more. <laughs> blue bloods, new bloods. <laughs> but um, someone I'm like looking at their board right now, like Mike Woodson. <laughs> Mike Woodson. That, that's oh one of, it, my they put him God, in the- what's the connection there? <laughs> this, is, this is funny. This Wait, is, t- t- uh, t- tell me what the connection there is. You uh, think Woodson, go to Indiana. Woodson played at Indiana from 76 he did? to 80. Seven, second team All-American, head coaching record in NBA, blah, blah, blah. I did not know he went to Indiana. Apparently, yeah. Indiana potentially wants an Indiana guy on Some the sidelines. Him, Beeline. I like Beeline for them a lot. But Beeline, how much? How many years does he have left? Yeah, that's what, that's what everybody says, though. So I guess we'll yeah. see. Um, Indiana Pacers assistant Calvert Cheney, former Indiana assistant under Tom Crean. If at that point just hired Tom Crean again, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, Chris Beard, nope. Eric Muselman, probably not. He just got Arkansas to a three seed. Like, if anything, I think his next step is going to be like NBA or something. I mean, I mean, this isn't. A t- do you think the Texas Tech coach? I mean, I don't know. That, yeah, Chris Beard. I don't. I don't. Oh, Chris Beard. Sorry. I don't see that like as a. I see that like a lateral move, kind of. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Thad Mata, Scott Drew, remaining names: Danny Fife or Dane Fife, the uh, mm. Michigan State assistant. Now I didn't know that. Um, Michael Lewis from UCLA, assistant, former Hoosier. Blah blah blah. That, that this is not a good looking. I mean, of course, there's like the big names, but I don't think any of them go there. Yeah, that's kind of why I thought they were going to hold on to him for another year and wait for that uh, buyout to go on. But they were st- obviously they were so pissed. Some, with them. Someone they were just, pissed off. Yeah, they were. And they were I mean, it was that's a, the ten million dollars is. Ba- I mean, that's basically the definition of screw you money just yeah. to get them out of here. But honestly, like you the, could say the, it. you the, could say it. Yeah, Fuck what you money? <laughs> yeah, that's so. <laughs> but well, um, yeah, yeah, I felt like this year's I guess coaching picks weren't that exciting. I thought maybe they'd wait another year see what names come out next year, but you know, um, if you want to be smart, I think Porter Moser's a good, yeah, candidate. that's, that's the guy. That's really the that, guy. That's like a Steve Peichel esque, like build right there. If you're going to get Porter Moser, like he's a low level school. He brought him to the tournament a couple of times, mm-hmm. made a couple mm-hmm. runs, and now he's going to go to a high level and see if he can still do it, but he's going to yeah. have to get good assistance with him. That's the issue. So, I mean, recruiting wise, can, is he going to be able to recruit? Like no offense. I don't think Kurt Wig in the big 10 is going to work week in and week out. But what? But uh, yeah. If you get a couple good assistants, like look what Pykele did. You got Brandon Knight. You got Carl Hobbs. You got um at the time Jay Young. Mm-hmm. You get a couple assistants that know what they're doing, recruiting and development wise, and you you can make a nice little program for yourself. Watch them hire Mike Woodson. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't know he's an Indiana player. That I didn't know that either. That's gonna be a that'd be interesting. That would, would be, be awful. He that see, there's two ways they can go here. They can go the Eddie Jordan route, or they can go to Steve <laughs> Pykele route. <laughs> and you yeah. know what's gonna happen? They're gonna, go, they're gonna go the Mike Woodson route. Probably. Now and that you meant now, now that I'm thinking it, I think Mike Woodson might be the guy. It's so bad. Don't do it. I mean, hey, actually, from a Rutgers perspective, screw it. Go for it. Waste another 10 mil. <laughs> uh, I don't know how we started talking about Indiana so in depth. I don't know. We're now but, we're uh, the Indiana board. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> definitely an intriguing board. Um <laughs> yeah, but Next year's team is going to be weird for Rutgers. I'm so intrigued. Like, I don't know what the hell is going to happen. They do return a lot of their scoring, though, which is a good thing. I know, I know, blah, blah, blah. They lost Jacob. Yes, they lost, what, 
28 points per game, 29 points per game. <laughs> no, that's Ron at top. I lied. Uh, 20, yeah, yeah, Jacob's second, uh, 14 more. Yeah, 24 and a half points per game if those two leave, and then add in Miles, you're 32 points per game. That it definitely hurts. I think Mulcahy takes a step up. The crazy stat I didn't realize Mulcahy's probably their best three point shooter this year, percentage wise. Um, 39.3%. I don't count. Oh, Cliff, yeah. Because Cliff only took two. Right. I don't count Jaden Jones because I think he took two. <laughs> and then uh, Mulcahy, 39 and 39.3. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> if, if Ron can just be more consistent, this team yeah. will be fine. Absolutely. It's, I mean, it, this is the cost of, you know, being a good team is that you lose players that are good. I mean, what's the, I mean, what do you, would you rather have the alternative that they suck? And that the you don't wish it within that you uh, don't really care. I mean, that this is what happens when you build a build a program is you got to say goodbye to really good players. And the, and if Peichel is the I mean, Peichel seems to be the guy. I mean, I would think we all think that then he can develop and bring more guys in and just, you know, restock and get them back to a position and maybe go even further in the coming years. So I think just looking based off this, I think Matt Mathis averaged eight per game this year. I think he could jump up to that 10, 11 mm-hmm. per game spot. I think, okay, he's going to jump from six to probably like nine, maybe 10. Um, Caleb, 5.7. I, I, his offensive game's like, yeah, seven points, maybe six points. I think I'll stay around that area. Cliff is going to go from four. If he's going to be the full-time starter, he'll, he'll go from four to nine, four to 10. Mawat Mag, I think could get up to five. He's at two. It's it's gonna really depend on if Jaden Jones is really that good or not. And from everything I've heard, he's it's pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like everyone was saying before, like if he could shoot the ball, that and, and that'll that'll open up the floor, <laughs> open um, up the game for Ron too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's, that's I huge. Think Ron, Ron and Montez were playing really well in the beginning of the season. Yeah, and they both they both kind of kind of dropped off, but. If Ron, like you said, man, if Ron could be consistent, hit the hit open threes, I think I think we'll see him, you know, drive to the hoop more. He's really effective at doing that. He's uh, he's obviously still still a really good defender. So mm-hmm. I mean, he, yeah, if he does all those things, then can you can start talking package. about the NBA. <laughs> I, yeah. I think he's still gonna make. He's gonna make it. Still, I'm very confident of that. Just because number one, he's got the bloodline. Number two, if he's gonna lead the team in scoring two years in a row, he's also a pretty good defender. Mm-hmm. He's um, you know, the four, but. Like, like, where's he playing the NBA if he goes? Yeah, the, the mm-hmm. four. Like a, I would, I would probably say a three, yeah, four, yeah, four. In the NBA, he has to play four. Yeah, there's no shot he can. Unless, guard. unless he, you know, gets crazy athletic over the next year or two. Yeah, what we have seen him like lose quite a bit of weight and add a couple, a little bit of muscle too over the past couple mm-hmm. years. So, it'd be intriguing to see if he can gain some speed back from that. I can hear it now. Now starting for the New York Knicks, Ron. Harper Jr. I like Ron a lot, but there's no way he's like a top three pick that you guys are going to have every year. Well, I mean, I would think he's going to be one of those gems that like Emmanuel quickly that the Knicks find and he'll be, uh, you know, starting for the Knicks in no time, baby. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, Well, I mean, you 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 had to think about Miles, uh, Miles Powell from seeing Hall was obviously really good in college, but he didn't. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm not sure what he's doing now, but I think he was really, with the Knicks for like a little bit. But he's with it. the Bucks, I think. Actually, he's, okay. he's yeah, he's he got a, traded or something. He's a weird one though, because he's inconsistent. He's he can't yeah, guard. But he, he could score. He was more consistent, yeah. I guess. So I mean, he's probably been. undersized for the NBA too. That's his problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a little bit undersized. Um, what is he? Five eleven, six foot, maybe. Yeah, he's short. Is he that short? <laughs> is I thought he was. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, I have no idea. Yeah, he also is just so inconsistent on offense like there's games where he had 30 and then there's games where he had like six and it's like what yeah. the hell and he also i don't know if a lot of people realize this this man shucked a ton in college mm. which you can get away with when you have mamu and what's his name down low forget their other what, who's their center I don't even uh, this year or the years past uh last year 2019 um yeah i can't think of his name i know you're talking oh uh, um uh not obiagu because they have obiagu now i'm pretty sure Delgado, no. Delgado, uh, Romero Gill, who's seven foot two, and then yeah, and Delgado, yeah, Angel, Delgado, yeah, I think it was Angel, Angel Delgado, was that his name? And and hell, <laughs> like I, I can picture, I can picture the same. Yeah. I'm blanking on. I might it actually might have been Romero Gill. Mm. Romero Gill, seven foot two, two fifty five. It's like 
Go to center. Go ahead. Comment <laughs> it. I dare you to comment <laughs> it down below. Um, <laughs> I, I hate that people have like these heights for positions now. No, I mean, I, I agree with them, though. I mean, obviously, it's different now, but I, I'm, a, I'm old school, like I, like I said. Yeah, sorry. I'm answering someone in the Ask the Experts. What was the question? Um, is there any mutual interest between Harar and Rutgers? Well, yeah, I mean, he wants to stay close to home, apparently. Yeah, I think that's probably a good thing, a good next topic, is what potential uh, recru- uh, transfers do you see? going to possibly coming to Rutgers. I think people got to get the Marcus Carr thing out of their head. <laughs> dude's, dude's good. Like he's, he's kind of undersized too, but he's very good. He's going to go somewhere and, and ball out kind of like reminds me a little bit of Nick honor. Like how Nick honor went to Clemson after balling mm-hmm. out for them. Um, he's, I don't know where he's going to go. I don't even know who's showing interest in him. I think Nebraska was looking at him. There a lot of big 10 schools. I think are going to steal each other's players to be honest. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be kind of cool too, to see. Um, get don't even say because I know someone's going to say it on the board. Yo, we should get Walker Kessler. Stop. He's a five star recruit from UNC who probably would have started this year if it wasn't mm-hmm. for what's his Brooks coming back. Most likely, I think I, I think I heard he came being connected to uh to Gonzaga. <sighs> Thank God. <laughs> that would make worst teams, worst teams you could pick. <laughs> yeah, I mean Gonzaga is great, dude. Jalen's. I didn't realize right. Jalen Suggs was such a good quarterback prospect too. Yeah, Ryan Day offered him a scholarship out of high school. Man's good, but yeah. um, yeah, um, he's uh, anyway going back to Harari a little bit. He's from Wallingford, which I believe, if I looked this up correctly the other day, it's like Eastern Pennsylvania, not too far from Philly. Okay. Hold on, let me look it up. I know what I'm talking about. I swear. How about Jamal Mashburn Jr. That's an intriguing one, too. Okay, so, all right, Wallingford is literally, like, right across the river. Mm. Wow. All right. Wow. It's literally <laughs> right there. Oh, my God. It's closer to Delaware. It's, mm-hmm. like, south of Philly a little bit. So, like, mm-hmm. you, the Delaware – what route is this? I don't even know what route this is. It's literally it's literally next next to Philly. It's right off of – 295. Logan Wallen Township. 30. I don't even know where the hell that is. Where? Logan Township. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's above Penn's Grove. But just mm-hmm. low Philly, Paulsboro, West Deptford, down there, and it's yeah. like you cross the bridge; it's right there. Yeah. But if he really wants to stay close to home, I I don't know if you can get much closer than that. Like, it's probably, probably it's probably two hours. Drive. I like how I like how this has become like a geography show with Richie. Yes, yes. Hey, this is like what? the geography Covering segment. Hour and twenty three minutes from your house, or do yeah. you want to go to like I don't know who else was showing interest in him? I don't even remember. I saw the list. There's a bunch of names. Uh, someone asked what the percentage, um, oops, forgot about that. That hurrah. Oh my God. We got a scoop. <laughs> no, 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 actually <laughs> big 10. It's for him you... calling be like, no, I do not live just outside of Delaware. You idiot. I live in Philly. <laughs> Philly. Big 10 to allow fans for spring games, according to local, based on ho- local health guidelines. So oh, I, got, I got the, I think we got the email a couple, like an hour or two ago. No, because yeah. Yeah. yeah, they said, but obviously, obviously, Rutgers still has to make a decision to allow fans like like baseball, softball, stuff like that. So, see, I was I was actually gonna bring that up at the end once we got past basketball, but yeah, I just I just saw it now. Sorry, it just popped up on my ESPN app. <laughs> um, yeah, I yeah. I can read the press release real quick. Yeah, if you have it, go for it. I got an email from the Big Ten. Um, Attendance policies for all remaining 20, 2020 and 21 Big Ten Conference regular season competition will follow local health guidelines and restrictions. Conference announced on Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. Um, this uh, policy update is effective immediately and also includes spring football. Um, the decision, blah, 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 blah limited. Uh, yeah, that's basically all I said. So basically, it's still, uh, it's still up to um, – still up to Rutgers to make the decision to whether to, to do that a lot anyway. So, so, so someone asked me in, in the, uh, asked the experts, I know we talked about it a little bit. Do you think the tournament changed anything in regards to geo and miles coming back? We talked about geo quite a bit and how mm-hmm. like the press conference, but I don't think it changed anything from miles perspective. This man's going to a grad school for engineering. Mm-hmm. He's a genius. Actually speaking get- of kind of along those lines, did you guys see the uh, CBS segment on miles? Uh, I saw parts of it. One of my, uh, really, I know, sent it to me. It was really cool. 
Yeah, I, cool. I keep meaning to watch it, but every time I just like I've seen like a little bit, but I haven't watched the full thing. I know it's yeah. only like a couple Who, minutes. So. Uh, it was narrated by someone. Um, yeah, May, May Jemison. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was it was interesting. It was really cool, cool to see though. Actually, right. fun fun fact: I did a project on Jemison back in elementary school. Really. I What'd think you it's get funny, on it? uh, like we joke around about it all the time, and they're like, "Yeah, haha." <laughs> they always bring it up, like he's an engineer, haha. Play the bingo game, like, yeah, there you go, drink, yeah. whatever. But <laughs> uh, it is, it is really cool to see it's like huge, that, yeah, that clip, like that whole clip or whatever you want to call it, video, movie, whatever you want to, mm. short, short film. Uh, that was really, uh, it was really neat to see. And that's my thing. Like, if this guy gets into like a top tier engineering grad school, how do you say no? Like, that's that's your future. Yeah. And especially if you did something you like, he even, I think he said it in the, the clip. He's like, it's 50, 50 basketball engineering. He did. He did say that. Yeah. I like to think it's probably more towards a little bit more engineering, but that's just me being biased and thinking like that's the smart route, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, he definitely puts academics, you know, for, I mean, he said basketball is going to stop when basketball, you know, stops, like he's not going to push. So, I mean, I, I would say education is huge to him. It's huge to his family. Uh, he wants to be an engineer. He has an internship, you know, now doing stuff. That, yeah, he's working for IBM. So, like, damn. yeah, like that's, you know, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. I think uh, it definitely, he's a, he's also in, intriguing. Uh, so, so put a, it like this. Su- super nice kid. So e- either way, he'll do great. Put it like this out of the top 10. I don't know what this website is. It's some kind of website. I'm rating a uh, top 10 engineering schools, mm-hmm. engineering grad schools in the country. Mm-hmm. Out of top 10, one, Two, three, four in California. Okay. Stanford, two, Cal Berkeley, uh, California, CIT, California Institute of Technology, mm-hmm. um, and then USC. So it's like if one of them like get, accepts you and probably gives you, you would think I uh, scholarship towards it, like, mm-hmm. How do you say no? You get to go home. You get to be close yeah. to home. And mm-hmm. I mean, he's I, from, I, he's I'm from, not advocating for it. And I know someone's going to go, why'd you say right. that? He no, knows. He's not, he's not dumb. No, he's he just being that. honest. And I mean, he's yeah. from he's from Long Beach, right outside of LA. So I know that's why USC is right there. No, yeah. and then you have. Yeah. I don't think Stanford's too far from his house either. And that, that that's obviously you know obviously huge academic school, beautiful campus. So. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure Rutgers Engineering School is probably up there somewhere, right. but. I remember it was funny because one of his cares. quotes was saying, "You know, he's survived every winter so far." <laughs> it's it's rough. It is rough yeah. over here. I mean, mean also also he has he would have technically two years. Is to, he computer uh, engineering or what? What is he? Um, it's it's like a double um, uh, computer and uh, man, I'll I'll look it up every time I talk about it because I always forget. <laughs> but it's definitely like a double engineering major. All right, so I'm just gonna look at computer because I found the whole list now. I'm kind of oh, I gotta pay for it. No, I'm not paying for that. <laughs> I just want to see where um Rutgers ranks among it. I know Rutgers is a very good engineering school, which is oh, and then yeah, all, I mean, also yeah. he also has um he also has his um what do you call it his nonprofit organization? Yeah, the uh, the BL, a, a black BLK dev. Dev, so right? and that's obviously you know big on you know obviously getting more more kids in in into STEM. That's obviously obviously yeah. a huge thing to him too. So I I like it, it's everything he's done here at the university is incredible um even if he left tomorrow that i know even geo said it like i don't know if i came away like a winner like miles came away a winner too like miles did they all did did some i mean they built this thing they built this thing from the ground up i mean look where they were when they first came in yeah Yeah. i I just feel like we don't talk enough about like the off the court stuff that these guys have done geo with the ncaa uh uh what was it what's the hashtag not my not ncaa property property yeah. Miles with the the BLK Dev thing, um, Paul Mulcahy with the Grateful Four Foundation. Like these guys are not just good basketball players, but they're great people in general. Like, yeah, yeah, it's insane. Well, also, also going kind of kind of sticking off off the off the court. Uh, this season has been obviously super tough for everybody. They had, you know, waking up super early for testing. They were isolated the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Geo mm-hmm. talked about you know you guys don't even know the half of it, whatever, something, something like something along those lines. So, yeah. I mean, maybe they want, you know, the college experience again, you know, possibly next year, more things are maybe a little, a little back to normal. So that, that could be a, maybe. A yeah. Too. Um, for what it's worth, Rutgers got ranked number 51 in best engineering schools. Mm-hmm. It's a big oh, deal. and miles, miles is um, computer and uh, electrical. 
All right, I got a computer popped up. What's I don't know what electrical would be or where it would be. Um, whatever, not the point. But Rutgers mm -hmm. overall engineering school, engineering grad school, fifty one overall. It says if you get into a top ten, it's like, and you get to close home, like yeah, uh, it's... That's, mm, it's tough. <laughs> I don't know. I don't that's know. that's a really I mean, tough they... one. If they do end up leaving, I mean, we know they'll be back for, you know, whatever next year's Rutgers celebration is for making the tournament for the first time. Oh, yeah, years. They, they have, um, I forget what it's called. Eric Clark was telling me about it, former Rutgers forward. He was saying that it's like the son, loyal sons and daughters event or something like that. They mm -hmm. have it. One of the first like conference home games or first home games every year, they have like all the people come back and celebrate and that next mm -hmm. year is going to be nuts though that's when they put up all the the banner and everything the night the 2021 it's going to be it's going to be nuts yeah they have the banner they can just put the you know 2000 yeah they're, i think there. i don't think they're getting a whole new banner for this no, no not a whole new banner have... I, i'm sorry i meant like the like they put the number up on yeah, they'll, the they'll throw the number up yeah, um, yeah that's what i meant interesting combo i don't know if we should have it or not because i i think i'm going to be against this one but should geo have his number retired I'll let Chris start. I know, I know someone else, another reporter had, had brought that up. Did someone um, write about it? what was it, Cratch or something? Yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't yeah. want to like advertise, but yeah. Oh, so whatever. <laughs> actually, the one thing I was saying, the one thing for, that, that was for great for them me too, <laughs> is how they they retired Luca Garza's number already in Iowa. Uh, Luca's a different situation. This man, like, while he was like still there, like that's. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't get that. I, I that's like the uh, who was it? the Rockets are like, hey, we're gonna retire James Harden's number. Like this man still yeah. play. like he still has many many years left yeah. to play. Like, and then he just wanted to get out of there too, which is yeah. So um, anyway. that's a weird. I, I, I don't know about Gio though. I'll know. be honest. I mean, I'll be. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Uh, to be honest, if call me a prisoner moment. I kind of think they should. To be I, honest, I kind of like, I kind of agree. I kind of think they should. It's not I always mean, about stats. Right. Right. Exactly. How many numbers have the Yankees retired? And that how many of those guys are all time, all time greats? But at Geo Baker, I mean, he has meant more to this program. He has meant so much to this program. Like his, like his, like he's just been so important to this program that putting it, I feel like putting his, his banner up there mm -hmm. will just give a whole new generation of really Rutgers fans something to really be proud of. And they can point to like, you know, hit to point to that and be like this is this was you know at, this was the guy during yeah. you know the such a such a such a crazy time in rutgers mm -hmm. history it's just I mean, like i mean i i i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't kill them if they put if they retired yes yeah. I, I don't know i don't know if maybe everyone gives them too much credit and i don't mean that in any bad way whatsoever but i i can i i agree i mean it's not always um, about the stats sometimes right, it's just exactly. about the impact you left I know, I know, I, I know. Richard looks. Uh... Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are we gonna retire Quincy Doobie then? Because Quincy Doobie is one of the best and one of the highest draft picks ever, like in history. It's like well, I don't want to hate on Quincy. I think he should have been retired already. I don't know what the hell they're doing there, but mm. I don't. I wouldn't kill them if they retired. Did him either, but yeah. at the same time, I don't want to hate on Quincy Doobie. But has he had as big of an impact on Rutgers that Geo said Geo got them to the NCAA tournament for the first time in thirty years? That's the thing, though. Like it wasn't. Should have been two. It wasn't just mm -hmm. Gio though. Like, there's a yeah, whole but he's the captain, right? But he's done a lot of things off the court. He said he's won some games at the end. A lot of a lot of games at the end. So listen, Roy if Hinson? they could put up a banner for everybody, I mean, I wouldn't hate it. <laughs> Roy Hinson got him to the NBA tournament multiple times. Averaged what sixteen and nine at one point in one season. Had a yeah, not, hey, the question was about Gio, not anybody else. I, well, I'm just bringing up people <laughs> that aren't retired. Like, I don't no, even know. I know. I know. Who is retired? I, I'm not, I wouldn't I'm mind it. Head. I mean, it's not a bad thing to, you know, look kindly like upon the, the, the good players you've had. It's not, I mean, not, it's not going to kill them to put up with some more banners. They could definitely, they sure. could definitely, definitely have the space. It's just such a tough one. Like, I, I don't know. I don't even know who's retired, actually. In I think history. it's like what James James Bailey. Like how many? Uh, yeah, there's only there's, there's not three. A lot. It's Phil there's Sellers, three. Bob Lloyd, and James Bailey. Okay. 12, 14, 20. And, and let's then... be honest. How many? I mean, how many people do we know that have actually seen those guys? I know a lot of our, you know, maybe I know there are people, but how, between the not three, a, of us, not I don't as think far back as you think, James Bailey. It's not so. that far, but I I would like to see. A player that like I actually saw play, you know, retired. Well, yeah, of course, everyone. Knows. I mean, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, everyone was. But uh, like, there there's some questionable ones. Like going back to the Yankee argument, like why the hell is Bernie Williams retired? Don't get me wrong, great player, loved him, right. cool. Why the hell are you retiring him? Right. I I agree. I agree. So many Yankees ones are kind of kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, I don't know. It's tough. I don't know. I mean, Gio's not just like you know, a, Craig. A I'm in, I'm, a, I'm in your camp, gamer, Craig. He can be. What was that? No. I'm in. I'm in your camp. I'm yeah. in your. Uh... See. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like, I feel like you have to, uh, you have to be like a combination of stats and everything too. Like it's, it's who's made, and who's made more bigger shots on the stretch than him. I mean, Quincy Doobie. Listen, really, you want to retire Quincy Doobie too? I'm okay with it. That's no, fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah. They should, that, that one should have been retired in my opinion. They do have the names and the images on this, on the uh, doors outside. They have that, but honestly, yeah, like, that, well, that's this, cool. I'm sure you'll that's see cool, you know, but you know, actually, if not next year, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just it would be cooler to see them on a banner. I don't know, man. 31 points over number two Villanova, all biggies. Listen, if you want to retire Hervé Lamazana too, I'd be okay with it. That's fine. Oop. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong, a Hervé Lamazana. Stop it. Nothing wrong with appreciating your I like your him, history. but he shouldn't be retired. <laughs> like, Gio's going to make the Rutgers Hall of Fame. I'll give him that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's like a given, I think, at that point. Listen, man, that shot against Syracuse, the Turve. I mean, come on. 25.4 point, point four points per game as a junior. Setting the school record for points per, points in a single season. We're talking about Quincy Dewey, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not against retiring his number. First either. team All Big East in one of the toughest Big East conferences ever. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Listen, let's lead the charge. I'll, I'll, I'll lead the charge for Geo. You lead the charge for Quincy, and then we'll get it done. <laughs> I think. I think Baker was the first All Big Ten honoree for Rutgers last year. But, yeah, but he was he first team. Oh, it was like it was like third team or something. But still, Quincy got first team. Yeah. I mean, th- this was a league that Rutgers still doesn't get respect into. Yeah, well, that's true too. The Big Ten is just a joke. I hate to say it, as much money as they give Rutgers, uh, barely any actually. Yeah, yeah. still <laughs> can talk about that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, intriguing. I don't know, man. These oh, Quincy's numbers <laughs> shot 47% from the field, 40% from three, 43% from three as a, a freshman. Jesus, he doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah, I have nothing I'm not against Quincy Doobie. I'm just saying. No, I don't think yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I'm just saying. If we're gonna retire numbers, we're we're requiring to uh yeah. required to retire Quincy first, I would think. Well, let's let's just do them all in one shot. Can't do that. It's Why not? Yeah, it's true. Because you you can make money. I mean, this is money here. Oh, I'm trying to look <laughs> at this 2005, 2006 biggies, a uh, second best conference in uh Wins and losses in, in the year that Quincy Dewey got all Big East first team. <sighs> Rutgers finished tenth in the conference, not bad. Yeah, my and, only my only argument would be who's had a bigger impact on this program, Quincy Dewey or Geo Baker. I think if it wasn't Freddie Jordan and Mike Rice, mm, I don't know. Uh, you want to say Geo? I know you do. I you don't. just don't want to agree with me. I like Geo a lot. But... <laughs> I don't know. Quincy Doobie was special. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's different because, you know, like younger kids are going to say like Geo, of course, because they grew up seeing Geo. Yeah. I, I grew up watching yeah. Quincy. So it's like. Oh, yeah. No, I did, too. I'm a, I'm a little. Howie Bailey. I'm, I forgot I'm about smart. him. Yeah. Chris, who would you say? OK, I can think since we're uh, we're going to run by Stephanie here. Chris, who would you say had a had a bigger impact on the program? Man, kind of say uh, Gio. Big, bigger impact. I mean, over, overall, I mean. Uh, just say it. Just Amandi say Mandy and Jai. You're right. You're right. It starts with a G, many, it ends Jai? with an O, how and it has an E in the middle. Just say it. How many N Jai was baller? N Jai, one of the best <laughs> shot blockers of all shot, time. Who's a shot blocker machine, man? man? He made the NBA too, second round. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Wizards, right? Think about it. So Quincy Doobie set up for Rutgers to get their highest rated player ever. Who was that, Mike Rosario? Mike Rosario. He transferred, but yeah, whatever. So you want to retire Mike Rosario next? Be, be my guest. <laughs> Fred, it's not my fault Fred Hill couldn't. Yeah, I, I don't know. Man. I think I think bigger overall impacts. Man, it, it, it's it's tough. I, I, I still go bigger just because the whole the whole package, every, everything. Thank you. And I like I like Doobie. Obviously, a great, great, great player. I know, Richard, you've talked to him a ton over the past couple of years. But. Who? Doobie. Oh, Doobie? I love Doobie. It's my yeah. guy. Yeah. 
he finally he finally retired enjoying life people are i think he's i think he went back to school he wants to get back into coaching or into coaching okay. so I, I think you so need a, uh, there's another comparison yeah, you need a college degree to be an assistant in college so i think he's going to try to do that that's just speculation oh, really? I, didn't, I don't think i knew that yeah uh there was someone i forget who it was got hired a couple years ago and they didn't have their college degree and there's a big deal fuss about mm. it but, oh was, was it eddie jordan or? yeah yeah actually yeah that's who it was yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. I know, I know. I, know. <laughs> I, was, I was kidding. <laughs> poor Eddie. I know. Poor, poor Eddie. Uh, anyway, um, do we think the lack of confidence, non-conference games, I read that wrong completely. Do you think the lack mm-hmm. of non-conference games stunted the growth of the other free freshmen, or do you think they would have been in the same spot out of rotation, even in normal season? I think, I think maybe, I think it definitely stunted the growth. I think in terms of rotation, I think it would still be the same as what it is or, or, or what it was now. But I think definitely stunned stunned to the growth because they didn't, they obviously would have played most likely more. So Pike likes to keep his rotations like what eight guys, nine mm-hmm. guys at times, maybe mm-hmm. tops. That's that's like pushing it a little bit. And he does he does play guys, so I think you would have saw that more than non-conference though. Yeah. Well, we talked about it. Moat Mag showed flashes, got injured, showed flashes yeah. again. Uh Palmquist just looks nervous a lot. Um he does. Dreber did whatever he could at times. He didn't look mm-hmm. bad at times against Garza, but. Yeah, he, he actually held his own, but then, and then other times when he's I, I, there. I honestly think like I was talking to someone about this the other day. He, he, he does remind me of John Harar, but like, I think that's his peak, mm-hmm. like a nine, like six guy. Like that's his peak is like junior, senior year. It's fine. I mean, if you could do that, great. And he could shoot. So there's that, that helps, but. So can Cliff apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of hope they don't force him to be like a shocked. Miles Johnson. No, I was shocked out. when like I would love that. to see him get with a little more perimeter game. Who? See what it's like. Cliff, Cliff yeah. Like I kind of hope they don't just force him to be a Miles Johnson 2.0. I mean, there's I mean, worse people you could be, but I mean, I would like to see them if he has it. I would like to see him step outside and take some more shots. Be one, one thing at a time. Let's work on the paint game first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then move it back a uh, level. Then work on the mid range. But you know, like we said, though, let's, let's, let's stick with the uh, rebounds because he's gonna like have to we do said, that though, next yeah. year. He's athletic, and as we as we've seen in this tournament, athletic bigs give uh, the Big Ten some problems. It seems like. So. Hmm. 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 You mean six foot eight, six foot nine <laughs> big men give people problems? I don't know, Richie. Hey, Cliff's what six <laughs> six eleven, six ten? Uh, yeah, Cliff, Cliff's unique though. Cliff. Yeah. There's not many people that can run up and down the floor with him. Mm. So. No, he's super quick. Yeah, you know who could probably run up and down the floor with him? Nick Claxton. Yeah. Right, Craig? You watch yeah. you watch the game, right? So I mean, uh, obviously, saw, I watched the you game. Saw the Clax yeah. God, Yanni, 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 Yanni. Oh God, good guy. Clax, Claxton's good, dude. Yeah, By good. the way, I was just thinking this. Uh, you, all this Mike Breen hate from you. I mean, what are you gonna say when your uh, Mike Breen is calling your team in the NBA Finals? What are you gonna hate him on him then too? That's a bold statement from a Knicks fan. NBA Finals. Oh, no, you guys are making it. I mean, come on. There's no way the Nets are not making the NBA Finals. Uh, hey, I know. Hey, Nets, and, uh, Nets Suns in the Finals. Just wait, wait yeah. till we get J.J. Redick. And oh, obviously. Yeah, and Andre Drummond. No, and, I think Drummond goes to the Lakers, to be honest. I don't think he starts if he comes to us. I think that's the bigger issue. And I don't want to lose Claxton's minutes. Know. Like, Claxton's playing so well. You think well. Jordan would start over Drummond? Yes, just because I think Drummond's more of, like, I'm going to sit in the paint and do nothing, whereas Jordan's might run up and down the floor for a couple minutes. But... <laughs> I know, I'm not. I'm not a big DeAndre Jordan fan here. Yeah. Um, he's dude. He's played really well this year. If you watch like his numbers and watch the games, like he, he's actually played decent. He's not uh, DeAndre Jordan in the Knicks. I'll tell you that much. But uh, Jordan was on the Knicks. Jordan. I can put honestly. I forgot he was even on the Knicks. Uh, he's on the Knicks like what two years ago? Yeah, <laughs> that shows you how much he, he was. was. Yeah, I don't exactly. Man. Chris doesn't even remember Jeez. either. I didn't know that. <laughs> you guys watched him being on the Clippers and like that was it. Well, this kid, yeah, this kid's let's a Suns let's fan. How, how, Chris, how did you become a Suns fan? Listen, all right. So, back <laughs> in, this is my uh, middle school days. I didn't, I didn't really have a team, and it's so of Mello, one, of my, one I mean, of my friends was like, "Yo, man, watch the Suns." Say it. Say it. It's because of Steve Nash. Steve, Steve Nash. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So no, it's because of Amari. Amari so started to be on Friday nights. Oh, the the Nets assistant Amari. Oh, and Amari said Amari. Oh, so so the Brooklyn Nets assistant and head coach. And you don't want to be a Nets fan. Neither one can actually coach. Nope. I don't know. What are we, 15 and 2 in our last 17 games? Oh, yeah. Because we have of, all the best yeah, players. Yeah, because of in the Steve league, Nash man. and Amari Stoudemire. 
has he nothing to do with James Harden. Because the MVP playing like James a Harden. freaking basketball god right now. He's not winning. Man. James Harden's not winning MVP. He should. What he might, happen? honestly. If what everybody can't... keeps getting hurt, he the might best, win. The best argument for it is look at how bad the Rockets are without him. And look Chris how good Paul. the Nets are. Hey, man, Chris Paul only him. conversation a little bit. I know, I know man, Chris I was... Paul doesn't put up the stats, but he's been. No, dude, I don't valuable. understand how Chris Paul does it. Like, he's adjusted his game so much. Yeah, yeah. we told you about that. I don't know why you were kind of. Not to get for that hiring. Yeah, for that you, you didn't want Chris Paul. Hold on. <laughs> nope. He's nice. Nope. Yeah, I was no. I gotta say it though, I was wrong about the James Harden trade. That that dude is just mm-hmm. he's so good. And you know what the he's best so part good. is? Those six or five picks or whatever it is, three of those are pick swaps. And let's be honest, they're not gonna they're gonna have a worse pick than us, so it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. He's so good. <laughs> they're so bad, dude. 20 games in a row. Well, they won, oh my they won, God. They won yeah, yesterday. That's terrible. They did win yesterday. Yeah. I mean, a Christian Woods back, now they're gonna start winning again. I mean, it's good. I mean, it's very good. But uh, yeah. Anyway, back to Rutgers. Back to Rutgers. Uh, football. Can I Let's talk? Uh, wait, hold on, real quick. Can I? Can I? Can I talk a little super quick about women's basketball? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys watched uh, the tournament or anything. Their game. I'm yeah, not, that, I'm not gonna I mean, say it, but um, yeah. So they kind uh, of they, a continuation of what uh, the night before was. Yeah, <laughs> like someone they, just they, stabbed you in the back, yep. and then this guy just got another knife and stabbed you in the back over here too. Yep. They had a they had a twelve point lead end of the third quarter or near the end of the third quarter, and uh, they went super cold in the fourth quarter. And uh, BYU was was making everything, and that was all she wrote. Yeah, I saw Arella drop like thirty and six. She dropped. She dropped thirty. Yeah, she was she was like super hurt in the press conference. She was she was crying. I actually I actually felt I, I felt right. I felt bad, but yeah. Something about something about Rutgers against Cougars. I don't know what it is, but it was just not mm. a good weekend. Mm. I didn't even realize that. That's a, that's yeah. a good call. It was, it was crazy because because BYU I think was like the very last team in the tournament, but they but they were obviously really good. They were they were buzzer bearding away from getting a, a, the automatic qualifying uh, in their conference. I was gonna like... make a Cougars joke, but it's not PG, so I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> It looks like everyone kind of has Arella. I looked at three different mocks. I can pass 10 seconds. Uh, Arella is yeah. probably third in most of them, if not all of them. It's it's crazy how uh, – yeah. Yeah. She's going to be a good WNBA player. I think so. She can score now. She's going to have a lot more space and score, you know, just as much in the WNBA. Her outside shot's pretty good. 17 and mm-hmm. 44, 39%, uh, 96 attempts, blah, blah, blah couple 30 point games but she does go cold at times three of 24 against nebraska yo sometimes yeah what's, what's with the nebraska stuff <laughs> <laughs> nebraska ball <laughs> thank you you see you see the uh nebraska website using that hashtag i did you know what yes nebraska I, meant to, ball. I meant to text you i saw that Love they it. didn't have much to celebrate this year so at least they had that <laughs> well apparently they're a candidate for a bunch of different uh what do you call it a bunch of different transfers and stuff so we'll see mm. but that's what, um, uh, that's what Fred Hoiberg did, does it? There just brings in transfers. Right? That's fine. <laughs> I mean, he brings in a transfer and then they'll leave like midway through. So. <laughs> a couple hours yeah. before the game. Hey, I'm out. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, Rutgers football <laughs> next week. About time. I don't yeah. think we're allowed to go. I haven't gotten a text back or anything. To be fair, I don't think I sent a text yet, but. <laughs> But um, I'm assuming if we if we were gonna be allowed to go, we'd probably get a heads up or something. But mm-hmm. it doesn't look positive. Well, um, maybe maybe the new fan thing today. Maybe uh, was there anything in that email, or is that just from the Big it, Ten? It just says um, local uh, the attendance policy will follow local guidelines. Yeah. But I'm sure Rutgers has to make its own decision as well. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, if the campus isn't even open, I can't imagine them being like, "Hey, yeah, the media mm-hmm. can come now." Like. Mm-hmm. We'll see, but I, I I highly doubt it. I'm gonna send a text now. Imagine the basketball season ending and you're actually excited for the football season. Like, what a time for Rutgers, man! <laughs> Dude, and baseball just uh, baseball too. Baseball just beat Ohio State in two out of three games. And lacrosse has been killing it. Lacrosse is ranked. I wrestling, think. wrestling, uh, wrestling had three All Americans. I mean, field hockey is <sighs> playing well. Women's soccer is playing well. Did the gymnastics team do something? To- they were first they place came, at the end. I think like, they came in like fifth place. They were overall. first place at the end of day one, I think it was, yeah. and then um, I don't know what happened afterwards. They came. But, I think they finished in fifth. But yeah, no, wrestling is interesting too. They uh, they didn't. It's weird. So Sebastian didn't do as good as people thought. I think he finished fourth or third. I forget. 
Um, but he moved up a weight class, third All American in a row, third All American at a different weight class too. That's mm. the crazy part. Went from one twenty five, one thirty three, one forty one. He probably sticks at one forty one next year. He is coming back, so that's huge. Um, he you get him back. Aguilar and uh, Shawver are gonna fight for that one twenty five. I think Shawver might actually take it over. He did take it over for Big Tens and the. You wrestled well then, the year. Yeah, or, or just Big Tens. I don't think he made NCAA's. I lied. Um, no media in spring. There you go. There you go. I just sent that text a while ago, but whatever. Um, anyway, what, who else I was talking? One thirty three. Sammy's got to get his weight under control. Uh, if he can, he's an All American. So next so year's would wrestling you see him fun. So what? What weight was so? So Sebastian was one forty one, right? I I know what you're saying. Could, could could he could he bump up and Sammy because you know can go to one forty one? He could, but it's just it's so tough to see that just because like Sebastian's already probably wrestling a little bit higher than he should be. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. If if anything, the I don't I don't know I don't see it happening, but like okay. could could he kind of like get bumped up and go up to uh. What is it? One forty nine. One forty nine, right? That's a lot of weight, man. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm looking at it now, that's a that's a tough one. Does Mike Van Brill come back? I I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know had, what the deal is. Great, but they can he, return he too. Had a great run in Big Ten tournament. And then he. Uh, he well, next next year is going to be like really fun for Rutgers wrestling fans, just because like you number one, no one saw Jackson Turley getting All American status, which is huge. No one saw a Posnanski going all the way to the third place matchup. As a true yeah, he's, freshman, he's so good. He's, he's he is. So, he was, I mean, he's he's from Colonia, so I've heard, I've, I've heard a little bit about him. Mm-hmm. But I, I, watching him, he's he's so good. He yeah. is he's crazy. Like he is just crazy good. <laughs> are we all are we all GMC guys? Too? Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't even think about that. You're right. That that is kind of crazy. A Listen, bit. they're op- they're gonna open up the Eric Legrand uh, coffee shop right by my oh, right by me. I'm so going if you guys want ever will stop by, we can have a. It's open. A I was talking to Eric about it the other day. Actually, I'm going to as soon as that opens up. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big like, I like cold brew coffee more than anything. Mm-hmm. Of course, they don't have it yet, but he, he told me it's on the way. So <laughs> as that shop opens up, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna try it out. And there you go. Big coffee guy here. Um, make a make like a little vlog post or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, no, we'll we'll post something on the site. <laughs> Going real quick back to wrestling. Um, what who's the Shaver Alvarez? If he gets it under control, Sebastian. I don't see him moving up, but imagine four weight classes, four All American status. Wow. Um, <laughs> Kennard, forgot about him. He did pretty well. I don't know. One sixty five next year is a question mark. I think Joe Grello leaves. I don't know who's going to be at that next matchup. That's going to be an interesting one. Uh, Posnanski, obviously. Billy Janzer. Billy Janzer moved up, too, because he. that's the thing that sucks. Joey Van, Billy Janzer threw on some pounds, but he looked so good at 184 the year before. Mm-hmm. Now yeah, he moved good. up, and you saw him struggle. So if he can get a – it's the full offseason thing, I think, more than anything for most people. If you get a full offseason in, like, you could be decent. Like, it's just mm-hmm. – I don't know. It's so big for development with these guys and working with the strength and conditioning, not just wrestling, any sport. But then Colucci McDermott, I think Colucci probably leaves, if I had to guess, and then McDermott mm-hmm. takes over. But mm-hmm. wrestling, they have a nice team next year. Like, yeah. it'll be fun again. And then we have Lex covering that. So, yeah. And I, I know, I know they went like 0 and 4 in duels, but the matches were, were like pretty much split, you know, about wise. That, that's so. another stupid thing. They got screwed over a little bit because they didn't have enough duels at all because mm. obviously COVID protocols and mm-hmm, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Uh, yeah. So, and recruiting for football. It's so, it's, uh, dude, top 12, I think it is 13, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Four star, four star, four star. You want to talk a little bit about uh Gavin Wimsat a little bit here? Can you say anything I, about him? I hate that people keep asking me. Like I, I don't know <laughs> the kid's timeline. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, well that's then that's 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 it. He, he's a very well. He's a very <laughs> busy kid. He does a lot of like, w- like side work off the field and stuff. I mm-hmm. know. I th- I think I said this last video. He was working at a three v three tournament not too long ago for uh, basketball. Uh, he he does like a lot of stuff for like his community and stuff like that. His mom, um, him and his mom actually worked in the tournament together. Um, he's he, dude, he's phenomenal. He is the perfect fit for Gleason's offense. And the fact that they're like kind of favored to land him right now is just 
it's insane to say that she, this is going to be the best recruiting class ever. I think mm -hmm. you'll have three, four stars, four, if he hops on board, Samuel Brown, likely a Rutgers lean at this point. That's five. Uh, Kier price out of DePaul six. Mm -hmm. I like um, him. He's, he's good. I like him. At that point, who, who else are we talking about? Uh, six. Moses Walker is liking Rutgers a lot. It's seven. And it's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it is, it's, it is crazy to say this whole, um, this whole thing is just nutty. I just, I don't mm -hmm. understand what, what they're selling to these kids, but I guess if it's just night and day compared to Chris Ash and this staff is incredible. And the fact that they're able to maintain everyone on staff another year is, is huge. But yeah. just last it's, question it's, it's on kinda, that. It's kind of like, like Pico keeping his staff together. Like that was, I, I, that it's was so tough. this year's going to be really huge. tough. I think yeah, this really year's going to be tough, but the intriguing one that I know everyone's like, yeah, Brandon Knight's going to be a head coach, going to be a head coach, going to be a head coach. I don't think Brandon Knight leaves unless he gets a really good head coaching spot. Um, I could see Carl Hobbs leaving. I think he wants to get a head coach again somewhere. And a lot of mid majors talk about his time at George Washington mm -hmm. and how he's a solid coach, good recruiter. I think he could leave, to be honest. I don't know where, but the, I saw him mentioned in, um, let me see if I can find it. I forget what job it was. It was like a low level job, but it was, in, it was intriguing to see. Um, where is it? Where is it? I just saw it. George Mason, like another mid-major type, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we'll we'll see what happens there. But what was the question you had, Craig? I was gonna say the last question on that. If you can say what percentage would you give it at right now that Gavin uh, commits to Rutgers? Seventy percent. Seventy percent. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident based on what we've heard. Um, it's just. That Kentucky poll is going to hurt a little bit, but it's it's like the same thing Rutgers does with the hometown kids. But I feel like kids in other states just have the state pride more, and mm -hmm. it's more like, hey, we want to stay home. Like people are like, how's Maryland recruiting so well? Yeah, yeah it would be they fun. More, they have more affinity for the home state. That would be a little ironic. That is the Rutgers' whole mantra is keeping the kids in state, and then their big quarterback prospect would be, <laughs> hey, come over. You can well, come I mean, over. that come that's kind of how Shiano started the. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how it works in college yeah. football. Hey, if, well, that's the thing. Chris Ash like, hey, if you don't want to come here, I'm just going to throw shit at a wall and throw like 300 offers out. Someone's going to want to come here. Like, no, mm -hmm. that's not how it works. Like. Chiano's mantra is basically like, hey, if you don't want to come here, I'm going to go find a four star somewhere else. Like, yep. I'm, I'm that good. Yeah. And he obviously has a Florida pipeline and everything. Yeah, the Florida so pipeline, the Berkeley, yeah, is... Berkeley prep pipeline is huge. Yeah. Um, they're always going to be in it for a kid down there, thanks to Shiano and his uh, world connection there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it is insane. Like, think about it. Marion Brown, four star Florida, uh, Pennsylvania, Anthony Johnson. Uh, Samuel Brown, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's it's crazy. It is crazy. But that, that's the biggest issue, I think, with North Jersey kids is that, they number one, they want to get out. Number two, I just don't think there's an affinity to stay home in New Jersey. No one really wants to. That's I don't know if that's the right term, even. I think, no, I just, I, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. pride affinity. Um, it's just like uh, – it's weird because, like, you go down to Maryland, everyone – and their mother has a Maryland flag somewhere in either their bedroom, their house or whatever. You just, I don't know. The state pride down there is just different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's just not like that here in Jersey. It's more or less, I think New Jersey, I saw it the other day is rated one of the top States where high school kids want to get out of state. So take it for what it's worth. Yep. So definitely a hard job, but they're, they're killing it on the recruiting trail where I'm, we're killing it in coverage. So I don't know. We're, we're just the best website ever, you know? <laughs> Listen, how many websites have a, a Fox 5 News guy over here? Oh, come on. How many? And I saw, Chris, you, you're you ranked like one of the top brackets in like the entire world right now. And I mean, what, who else picked Loyola Chicago over Illinois? I mean, I, really, I can't think of anybody else. It's just so, I, mean, where like else? This. I don't know if you guys saw or anything, but Tally site, the little site we use to make our picks. I'm number two for most correct predictions in a row. I did. I did. You know what? I saw, I saw you're up there, like overall, the overall. The... I don't know where I am overall, but like I think it's like there's seven or eight people that have been uh, that have predicted the top or the last seven games in a row, right? And I was like, mm. Mm. oh yeah, number two, nice. uh, money line hot streaks. Huh. Me seven nice. in a row. 
ride the coattails of me. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I, apparently I was good at over, over unders. <laughs> yeah. Our new, uh, our new gambling writer or entertainment gambling, whatever you want to call him. Fade him. His name is no longer Billy <laughs> Frank. It's Frankie fades. I'm changing it. I don't care. It's Frankie fans. fades. That's funny. <laughs> Put it like this. He's been pretty bad, but at the same time, would you rather go undefeated or go like, like really good or really bad? There's no, you can't go in between. Yeah. Would you rather like, make money or lose money? Well, it's and that's what I'm saying. Fade him. Fade him, and you can you can make some money. I mean, I think went over four the other day, and I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, put it like this. Now they can all fade me and still hit a couple bets, and I'm like, all right, I guess you're right. I'd rather that's be. That's a I'd, I'd rather, spin zone. Rather be O of twelve than. 50% because 50% people are like, oh, we love you. We hate you. These, these people are just like, yo, we hate you. We're right against you. <laughs> so, I thought it was funny what he said, but he has been struggling. Um, if you're going to, if you're going to follow it, just fade him. <laughs> it's not gambling advice. Throw that out there. But, <laughs> uh, but if I mean, GameStop, you know, stocks, stonks, <laughs> the moon, Elon Musk, Tesla, all of the above. Doge coin. To the moon. <laughs> all right. Um, I guess that's pretty much all we got, all right? right? Yeah. Is we talk everything, Rutgers, football, baseball, basketball, wrestling, um, yeah, recruiting. Yo, uh, what do you nothing. guys got? Uh, anybody have any articles coming out this week? We can, uh, I do have my three to? final thoughts coming out. I have that. I just got to insert a bunch of different links and stuff, but I'll have that probably ready to go pretty soon. We just posted, uh, what was it? Rutgers running back preview today. Watch out for a little sneak peek there in um, – what's his name? Uh, Dylan, one of our interns, wrote it up. He um, Salam is going to be a, sneak, a sneaky guy right there. He's going to have some speed on the offense. Uh, JWC, Wright Collins, power back. Mm-hmm. Looks pretty intriguing. Uh, Pacheco, obviously everyone knows. Aaron Young, everyone knows. Um, the non guy might have a little bit of a role, but I, I really think JWC is going to make some noise this year. That's my uh, my bold prediction for today. There you go. Uh, ooh, excuse me. Um, ooh. let's see what else. Uh, that, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Right, I guess I have. Uh, I have. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna work on a like a, a Rutgers basketball awards post, so to speak. Put a couple, you know, MVP, offense play of the year. You know, maybe maybe best play stuff like that. So you. I, I like the best play idea. I like that one a lot. I, I also wrote down best moment. I, I'm going to write down a couple things, so we'll see. All right, all right. Let's see. That sounds good. Um, I guess that that's pretty much it, man. I got I got nothing. I'm running out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> yeah, so. it's, it's been uh, like almost two hours. So. Has yeah. it really? Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, it's like yeah. All right, we're, we're time on. to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I got a lot of shit to do today. Actually, it sucks, but whatever. Um, all right, night report. Someone make us a theme song. Peace. <laughs>